Hello America, London calling. So today we're here with the awesome Divine Chaos, or at least two of the five members. Hello guys, um, we've got Dave on the bass and Chris O'Toole, who is one of the guitarists. Let's talk about your, your debut album, which was released around this time last year, uh, New Dawn in the Age of War, uh, which was released under Eagle Eye Records, who you're part of ways with since. Um, tell us about the, the writing process and um, theme and concepts behind the album. So yeah, it came out about this time last year, like you said, and um, as our debut album, we wanted to make a, a strong debut, so uh, we chose the services of uh, Scott Aikens from Stampy Brown, a um, well-known producer, um, well with everyone from uh, Crazy Phil, Sol Isis, to Modern Mark, and um, yeah, we knew we were going to get a good product by working with him, he did our, um, our previous recording, so you know, comfortable with uh, sort of working relationship, he's sort of like a comfy member of the band, you know? Short period of time and go actually recording. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it did really well in the press. Uh, we got uh, great reviews across the board basically. Um, from every, everything from uh, The Guardian to Metal Hammer and Dark Sword, every, everything online. Um, and uh, yeah, thematically, obviously from the title of New Dawn the Age of War, you know, you probably gather it's like a, a war theme. But um, every song has sort of an individual focus within the theme. You know, so, uh, I mean, the opening track, um, Last Confession, is kind of like an apocalyptic worst case scenario version of events. So, we sort of take a lot of things, sort of like, fast forward into the future, and everything sort of like culminates, and uh, we sort of have humanity looking back on itself and like sort of accepting itself where it really is. And uh, the track, Perpetual War Policy, uh, talks a lot about profit driven war, and uh, things have gone behind the scene, and people like pushing for certain conflict because they'll, they'll profit from it. Oh. Well, when I've joined the band, the album had already been written, so I <laughs> not have much of an input, um, apart from maybe coming up with a few bass lines and things like that. Yeah. I was more, I never really knew what the songs, I knew they were all kind of war related. Kind of what drew me to the band was the music behind it, really. Mm. Um, I just knew it was fast riffs and solos and screaming, really, and that, that, appealed, that appealed to me, yeah. I mean, a lot, yeah. a lot of the themes were sort of influenced by literature. Mm. I mean, I don't write the lyrics, but the lyrics that were written, well, I know influenced uh, a lot by um, like rock and Mm. So it's kind of like a little bit of research beforehand. So things were taken, you know, mm. from real life things. But obviously, when you're writing lyrics, you don't want to be too specific. So you try and paint the picture with it. But it's obviously based on sort of like real things. Oh, so it's a, a real rich and complex album um, from the lyrical perspective as well as the, the yeah. technical structure of the music itself. Yeah, I think really. you know you read the lyrics and, and you could see where you would see where a lot of it was sourced from. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Thinking about the touring experience again from a different angle, have like you got any funny or disastrous stories to share with us with being on tour or being in general? Yeah, we, we hear all day talking about disasters and things going wrong. Um, technical difficulties, obviously, number one, you get things going wrong on stage and you know, you've so much cable everywhere, right? you don't know what's what, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, what, what's broken, what isn't. So uh, but those are sort of like a regular theme, but there's a lot of downtime when you're on the road. You know, you, 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 sort of, you basically went to play a one hour gig every night, so you got 23 hours to fill. And yeah, so what do you get up to in that time? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm about really. They're yeah, bombing about. about. Yeah, the <laughs> booth. But um, yeah, we play, we play certain games. We, we whip each other with speaker leads, <laughs> heavy industrial speaker leads. Who, who, who gives up first? There, there's video footage of that if anyone wants to see it. Yeah. Um, it's always the hot so, yeah. sauce as well. Yeah, the hot sauce is, uh, is, is the best one. Um, we've had. We had this stuff, this hot sauce, it was so strong that um, put one guy in hospital. There's no fault of drinking it. <laughs> drinking like, it? Yeah. I was going to say yeah, it. Was, We played a show at Maidenhead and, and people like taking samples of it and it was like, it was killing them. Goals for the future? Where do you want to take the band? Well, I mean, after the uh, Venom tour, we saw one hit the ground running um, with the live campaign. I mean, at the minute, uh, things are on the up and up, things like festivals, you know, we're going to try and push mainly for more festival campaign next mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. than sort of um, like mass touring. You know, we, we don't want to 
we don't really want to be doing sort of like headlines or anything like that because I think festivals now have been, you know, because they're so much popularity and it's better showcase for the band and yeah. that's going to be our focus really, so um, cool. get on with that. Um, halfway through the writing process for the next album. Amazing. Be massively God knows what that's going to be about. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we're halfway through the process with that, so we're going to get back in the studio and um, see how we go. We're probably going to do a lot of it our, ourselves this time, so we learned a lot last time in the studio and we're more capable of doing it ourselves. Right, might as well if you can do it yourself then. Yeah, yeah it's the way most bands are going as well. Yeah. You can do it in your own time, you haven't got to worry about putting in studio time. There's so much of it is accessible yourself. Because mm -hmm. you have it, Produce those breaks and like direct certain things as you go. What is, what is the hardest thing about being in a band, would you say? You said everything apart from playing live shows, really. really? Yeah, everything, yeah. everything bar playing live. Putting up with each other. Yeah. yeah, there is that. But I mean, obviously, you get into it, you want to play gigs, you want to play your instrument, you want to record, you want to, you know, you want to, you want to write as well. And but there's so much more to it that people don't see. Like, you start with the self promotion side of it, and I mean, you can spend like, a day sitting there trying to work out how to cut your logo out of Photoshop and put it over a moving picture, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and that sort of ends up consuming your time more than the actual plan, and, and, and that's the side that no one really enjoys, but everyone's got to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, every, everyone's got, every band's got to do it, it's, it's just... Um, it's just the way it's now, though, because not a lot of people are back in labels and things like that, and no, they're not there themselves, so you kind of your own promotion company as well. So. Yeah, yeah that's, that's basically it, and you want organisation involved in that. Yeah. So something as simple as like you know, getting your merch printed up and making sure it's at the first one time and mm -hmm. how you're going to get there or you're going to sleep. Yeah. You do your own routine, your own organisation. Uh, we'll let you on that one. Yeah, exactly. That's it for this week. Back to you in the studio, Zander.